Hello everyone, welcome to this channel. If you're new here, my name is Muhammad Hassan. Let's begin our seventh part of the video series. This will be the final video related to reflection. After this, I will be starting refraction. I feel like if you have these concepts related to reflection, then no questions from this part in need could bend you down. I have made this video short and precise so that you can get maximum benefit within minimum time. I always believe in doing more things within short amount of time so that I could invest those time in learning new skills. There is a beautiful quote and I love it. Time is what we want most but what we use worst. So without any further delay, let's get started. Okay, let's start our study on the concept of velocity in a spherical mirror. But before that, I need to tell you that the concept that I'll be using in finding the velocity in a spherical mirror is same as the concept that I've used while finding velocity of the image formed in plane mirror. If you haven't checked that video, then you can check that video by going to my playlist on Ray Optics Part 3. I've discussed that concept in Part 3. So I'll link it somewhere in the upper right corner or you can check the link in the description below. So let's move on. Let's review it a little bit before moving into the concept of velocity in spherical mirror. The first thing that we have discussed there is that if the object, this is the first case, if the object moves perpendicular to the mirror, this is the case, then we got that velocity of the mirror is equal to velocity of object plus velocity of the image divided by 2. And most of the cases we said that a velocity of the mirror will be 0 because the mirror will be still. In most of the cases, if the mirror is still, that is Vm is equal to 0, then we got that uh, velocity of image is equal to minus velocity of object. So this is what we got. Now let's look into the second concept, velocity parallel to the mirror. And we got that when the object is moving parallel to the mirror, the diagram is shown here. So you can see the object is moving in this direction. Therefore, what will the velocity of the image? And we said that velocity of the object will be equal to velocity of the image and both will be moving in the same direction. In the earlier case, the velocity of the image and the velocity of the object have same magnitude but opposite in direction. Therefore, this negative sign comes up. Now, the last one we discussed was the velocity of image when object moves obliquely. Like this is the diagram. Okay, that is the object is moving in this direction. Then what will be the velocity of the image? And I think I have discussed one question in order to explain the concept. It's there in part three of the video series. So do check that video before diving into this concept. So let's now start the main topic for this video that is velocity of image uh, in case of spherical mirror. So let's see. So let's start our study on velocity of image in spherical mirror. So there are two cases. It is similar to the thing that we have learned in velocity of image in plane mirror. The same concept. There also there are two cases. Here also there are two cases. So if you have gone through that video, then it's easy for you to understand. Let me explain this thing. Like in order to find the velocity of the image, what we did was we need the relationship between V and U. That is what is the relationship between the object distance and the image distance with respect to the mirror. Okay, so we said that in ca case of plane mirror, the relationship was very easy. Like this is the object. So we can say that this distance is u. Then we said that for plane mirror, the image is always formed at the same distance behind the mirror. And this will be v. And we got the relationship as u is equal to v. Okay, and once we got this relationship, we differentiated this in order to get the velocity. Simple because these are nothing but position or displacement from the pole. So we know that differentiation of a displacement gives us velocity. So we use that technique. Similarly, we'll be using the same technique here. So let me explain it and things will be very, very easy. So don't worry, just concentrate here a little bit and things will be easy. What is the relationship between image distance and object distance in case of spherical mirror? And we have learned that there is a relationship and that relationship is given by mirror formula and I've derived this formula in my part 5 video and also explained it with certain number of numerical in my part 6 video. So if you haven't checked that video, then you can check it by clicking the link in the upper right corner or by clicking the link in the description below. So let's move on. This is the mirror formula that is it gives us relationship between V and U. Once we establish that, then things are quite easy. What we need to do? Just differentiate. So let's uh, arrange this formula in a bit easier way. So we move here in order to arrange that formula. And we said that 1 by f is equal to 
f inverse 1 by v can be written as v inverse and 1 by u can be written as u inverse once we sorted out this thing then what we need to do is do the same process what we did earlier that is differentiating both sides with respect to time we know that differentiating position or location with respect to time gives us velocity isn't it where x was that displacement here v and u are displacement from the pole so the concept is similar if we differentiate that with respect to time we'll get velocity let's see if we differentiate we get df inverse by dt is equal to dv inverse by dt plus du inverse by dt okay now let's move on and see we know that f is focal length okay and focal length for a particular mirror is always a constant isn't it and we know differentiation of any constant gives us zero isn't it because this thing is constant differentiation will give us zero so we got df inverse by dt as zero simple as that we'll be using this technique dx to the power n by dt if we differentiate this we, we will get n x to the power n minus 1 dx by dt now we'll be using this concept to differentiate dv inverse by dt so we got minus 1 v to the power minus 1 minus 1 will give us v to the power minus 2 and then dv by dt similarly we differentiated this part and we got minus u to the power minus 2 du by dt i hope this is clear these are basic mathematics now what we will do we will arrange this term accordingly in order to find the velocity of image so we got if you bring this term on the left side of equal to then we'll get v to the power minus 2 dv by dt is equal to minus u to the power minus 2 du by dt i hope this much is clear let me rub this off i hope you are taking note of what i'm saying okay after this we can write that dv by dt we need to find the velocity of the image therefore what we will do is put dv by dt on one side and other rest of the term on the other side so we got minus of u to the power minus 2 du by dt divided by we can say v to the power minus 2 isn't it now we can say that minus u by v to the power minus 2 du by dt this is nothing but dv by dt now what we did is we changed this minus 2 to plus 2 here in this equation therefore u and v will get flipped as you can see u goes below and v goes above because we have changed this sign so this is simple mathematics so we got dv by dt is equal to minus v by u whole square du by dt now what is dv by dt we know v is image location therefore dv by dt will give us image velocity as you can see okay and u is object location so du by dt will give us velocity of the object so similarly we got the result as velocity of image is equal to minus v by u whole square velocity of object you need to remember this formula this is very important now the final thing that i need to say that when we derived the velocity of image in case of plane mirror we got vi is equal to minus vo why minus vo negative because let me draw it here because when the object this is object was moving in this direction with certain velocity vo then the image will move in the opposite direction with the same velocity vi the magnitude will be same but the direction will be opposite therefore this negative sign comes into play similarly we can see that let me rub this off we can see that if we draw a mirror spherical mirror and this is suppose uh, a center of curvature and this is our object O if it moves in this way we know since the object is beyond center of curvature this is the focus then the image will be formed somewhere around here okay this is the image and we know when the object moves in this direction the image tends to move in this direction therefore we can see again if we look into the formula VI is equal to minus V by U whole square VO okay so this minus signifies that the image will be moving in the opposite direction i hope the dissection of the formula is clear now okay now let's move on to our final part of the concept here that is the velocity of the image and velocity of the object are taken with respect to mirror if you have gone through my previous video you know that in case of plane mirror when the object was moving in this direction okay and the image will move in this direction we said that vi is equal to minus vo and we said that all these terms that we take these velocities are actually with respect to mirror and we said that this is nothing but vim is equal to minus vom that is velocity of the image with respect to mirror and this is velocity of object with respect to mirror and we use the formula that we have studied in kinematics that is vab is equal to va minus vb so we wrote that vim will be vi minus vm 
which is equal to minus, then we bracketed this thing VO minus VM. We got this kind of result. We'll be using the same technique here in order to explain the concept of velocity of mirror. So let's see. Let me rub this off. Okay, we can see that VI is equal to minus V by U whole square VO. So these velocities are actually velocity with respect to mirror. So we can see this formula can be written in this way. VIM is equal to minus V by U whole square VOM. Okay, so we can write VI minus VM is equal to minus V by U whole square VO minus VM. This formula is only applicable. You can look it up here. I have written this. You can use this formula only when the velocity of mirror is given. Otherwise, if the velocity of mirror is zero, that is the mirror is at rest. And you can get this formula if you put VM is equal to zero. So this is all about the velocity of image in case of spherical mirror when the object moves perpendicular to the mirror or towards the mirror or away from the mirror along the principal axis. So these are the concepts that we need to remember. And if you just remember the formula, you can solve any questions based on this concept. Okay. Now let's move on and check some formula in order to solidify the concept. Now let's look into this question in order to solidify the concept that we have learned earlier. It says when an object is kept at a distance of 30 centimeter, so this is the object distance or we can simply say u is 30 centimeter from a concave mirror. So we know that concave mirror so it will be minus. I won't explain the sign convention because it's easy. I have already explained it and the image is formed at a distance of 10 centimeter and the image is formed that is v is formed at 10 centimeter in front of the mirror. So it's minus 10 centimeter. If the object is moved with a speed of 9 meter per second. Okay. So actually let me draw the scenario. It will be easy for you to understand. So this is our mirror, spherical mirror, concave mirror, and the object is kept around like 30 centimeter. That is, this is U and the image is formed here. Okay. This is V. U is 30 centimeter negative and V is 10 centimeter negative. Okay. Now it says that the object is moving at a speed of at that point is 9 meter per second. Okay, then what will be the velocity of the image at that instant? So let's find out that we can directly use the formula that velocity of image since the mirror is at rest. So Vm is equal to zero. So Vi is equal to minus of V by U minus 10 by minus 30. That is V by U whole square and velocity of the object. Okay, now velocity of the object we can write it 1 by 3 whole square. Now velocity of the object is given as 9 meter per second. As you can see, it's given in the question. So 9. Now you can see that 30 and 10 are given in centimeter, but we are not changing it into meter because uh, we are actually dividing the thing that is 10 by 30. So centimeter and centimeter. So centimeter, centimeter will get cancelled. Don't need to change the unit to meter. Okay. That's the advantage when you are uh, dividing things. Okay. 1 by 3 whole square into 9 will give us minus 1 meter per second minus because it's moving in the opposite direction to that in which the object is moving okay simple as that this is object this is the image but you can solve this question even without touching pen and paper directly orally now that's the difference between an average student and a smart student since you are my student i believe you're smart and if you're not then you're in the process of becoming smarter so don't worry you're going to get smarter over time so let's see how to uh, solve this thing like a smart student if you look into this formula then it says velocity of the image is equal to minus v by u whole square and velocity of the object in order to uh, be smart you need to not only remember the formula, but you need to understand how to dissect the formula. Okay, so let's dissect this formula and understand the thing so that we can solve these questions very quickly. See, the only thing that we are worried about in this formula is V by U, the ratio of V by U. If you can get the ratio of V by U, then just square it and multiply it with the velocity of the object and you'll get the answer. Okay, I hope this much is clear. If you have gone through my previous videos, then I think V by U, this ratio is quite familiar and you know this ratio. This is given by magnification and a negative sign was there in front where says that magnification is equal to minus V by U. Just forget about the negative sign. So magnification, the if you just take into consideration the magnitude, then magnification tells us how much bigger or smaller the image formed with respect to the object. Okay. If the image formed is three times smaller than the object, then the magnification is one by three. If it is five times smaller than the object, then one by five. If it is three times bigger than the object, then it is three. Isn't it? That's what magnification tells us. Now, another thing you need to understand that 
if this is a spherical mirror okay and this is the center of curvature this is the focus and this is our object o okay understand one thing that until and unless the image this image position crosses the object it will always be smaller than the object i repeat again if the image is formed before the object that is if the image is formed before the object in case of spherical mirror we see that the size of the image is always smaller than the object the moment if this is focus this is center of curvature the moment the object is placed at certain position such that the image is formed behind or beyond the position of the object then we know that the image formed is bigger than the object i hope this much concept is clear this is very important you'll see how this concept will help you to solve these questions very very fast okay now let's see we have got that u that is the object distance from the pole is minus 30 cm and v is equal to minus 10 cm as you can see 10 cm and 30 cm and this is the velocity 9 m per second okay now as you can see that the image that is formed is before the object okay that is this is 30 cm object this is 10 cm image so you can see the image is formed before the object therefore you can say that the image is smaller than the object how much smaller that's the question so you can directly say from the ratio that the magnification if you take into consideration just the magnitude then it is 1 by 3 v by u is 1 by 3 that is 3 times smaller than the object so you can directly say that velocity of the image will be 1 by 3 that is the magnification square and then v not okay and minus sign signifies that it is moving in the opposite direction isn't it so very important directly understand if you just get the value of how much bigger or smaller the image is then you can directly solve this kind of question looking by the question if the question was such that if it is not given suppose 30 and 10 cm is not given in the question it says that the object is placed at a certain location such that the image formed is double the size of the object then what is the velocity of the image if the object is moving at a velocity of 9 m per second then very easy since i said that the object is double the size of the image then we can directly say the velocity of the image will be minus opposite direction this sign shows so double means 2 square into 9 9 m per second 36 meter per second simple as that i hope the concept is clear okay i hope you are now smarter and you can solve these kind of questions very very quickly now let's move on to our second question so that i could explain you a different angle by which you can be asked this kind of question okay so let's jump into that now let's look into this second question and this is also a simple question let's solve okay now you can see that uh, the spherical mirror is given having a focal length of 20 cm and the object is placed at a distance of 40 cm in front of the mirror and the object is moving at 2 cm per second okay you need to find out the velocity of the image so v of i you need to find out this how to find out this now in this question what is given is this distance that is u now v is not given so how to find out the velocity of image very simple see you know focal length you know u you just need to find v and there's a relationship between f u and v and that relationship is known as mirror formula so you can directly find v i'll use the direct formula that is u f divided by u minus f let's put the value here u is equal to minus 40 because it is a concave mirror I'll, i won't explain the sign convention now f is equal to minus 20 because it is a concave mirror divided by minus 40 minus of minus 20 will be plus 20 now if you solve this we'll get plus 800 divided by minus 20 if you solve this you are going to get minus 40 isn't it minus 40 cm so the image is formed at a distance of minus 40 cm or 40 cm in front of the mirror simple as that now you can use the formula vi is equal to minus of v by u whole square into the speed of the or the velocity of the object that is 2 cm per second and by this you can solve what will be the result okay and if you solve this let's solve v by u will be uh, 40 minus 40 divided by minus 40 will give us 1 so 1 square and 2 cm per second and we are ultimately getting minus 2 cm per second minus because it is moving in the opposite direction 2 cm per second now can we use a certain trick in order to solve this question very fast because you know that neat is such a examination in which they will never ask question that can't be solved within 1 minute they will ask question deliberately that can be solved within like 1 minute and that's the uh, trick that you need to understand okay that's what i say to student that before appearing for any exam you need to study the exam okay so let's uh, solve this question by the trick that i have told you using magnification 
Okay. Now let's see. Focal length is 20 cm, isn't it? It's given. And it says that the object is at 40 cm. Very good. This is our object. Now this is the focus. That means this length is 20 cm. If this length is 20 cm, then this will be center of curvature. What will be the distance of center of curvature or radius of curvature? The radius of curvature will be 40 cm because we know that radius of curvature is equal to twice of focal length, isn't it? Now this is center of curvature which is at a distance of 40 cm. Now the object is placed at the center of curvature and we know that when object is placed at center of curvature then the image will be formed at center of curvature and we know the size of image will be equal to size of object when the object is placed at center of curvature. For center of curvature we know height of image is equal to height of object. This was a special case when I was explaining this. Okay, if you haven't checked that part then please go and check that part where I explain the image formation by spherical mirror. Okay, so as you can see so magnification will be equal to modulus of magnification will be 1. If modulus of magnification is 1 then we can directly say velocity of image will be minus of magnification square modulus of magnification square into velocity of the object here the velocity of the object is 2 cm per second so you can directly say it is minus 2 cm per second simple as that you got the answer just take the answer and move on this is how you need to apply the trick i hope the concept is clear okay now let's move on to our second case Okay, the second case says that when the object is moving parallel to the mirror and this was the case that we have explained in case of plane mirror also that if this is our plane mirror and the object is here if it moves in this way then the image will also move in this way this is object this is the image and we found out that velocity of object is equal to velocity of the image that was very simple but the thing is not that simple in case of spherical mirror now let's see how to do that in case of spherical mirror we know that in order to find the velocity we need the relationship between the object location and velocity location and how are they varying and when the object is moving along the principal axis or perpendicular to the mirror we got the relationship that 1 by f is equal to 1 by v plus 1 by u okay and differentiating this we got the velocity while the object is moving along the principal axis but the things becomes difficult we cannot use the formula 1 by f is equal to 1 by v plus 1 by u here because the object is not moving along the principal axis therefore this v remains constant this u remains constant and this is always constant so when the object is moving in this direction if this is our u is it ever changing no u remains constant therefore we cannot use this if you differentiate these quantities then we are ultimately going to get zero because v is constant u is constant differentiation of constant will give us zero so you cannot use this concept so what is the concept that is required in order to find this velocity now you have the relationship between bodies when moving in this direction you have that relationship so let's think 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 a little bit okay so let me reveal you have learned this formula magnification is equal to hi by ho that is height of image by height of object and while i was explaining the concept of sign convention i said that when moving up from the principal axis we take it as positive and while moving down from the principal axis we take it as negative isn't it so this is the relation that we need to use in order to find the velocity of object while moving parallel to the mirror okay because we are moving in this direction and the image will move in this direction so let's see we know that m is equal to height of image by height of object which is again equal to we have derived this minus v by u isn't it so this thing has already been derived so we'll be using this concept see there is a relation between v and u and hi and ho this is what we needed okay so what we'll do is cross multiply hi u is equal to minus v h o once you got this thing then it's very simple just differentiate both sides with respect to time okay we know that u is constant and v is constant what is changing hi is changing and ho is changing okay why u and v are constant because the object is not moving along the principal axis therefore it's constant i hope this much is clear therefore if you differentiate you will come out d hi by dt and we can say that if hi comes out then du by dt isn't it and we can say that this minus v if you take it outside then it will be v d h o by d t plus h o d v by d t now d u by d t is 0 and d v by d t is 0 because u is constant and here v is constant so you can directly say that u d h i by d t is equal to minus v d h o by d t now what is d h i by d t this is actually 
the velocity of the image moving down or up okay because hi is what the height change of the image therefore dhi by dt is nothing but the velocity of the image so let me write it down somewhat here okay so we can say that d hi by dt this is the quantity that we need to find is equal to minus v by u dho by dt now dhi by dt this is actually the velocity of the image and minus v by u dho by dt is actually the velocity of the object this is the formula that you need to remember in the earlier case we got vi is equal to minus v by u whole square v naught here there is no square term when the object is moving parallel to the mirror i hope the concept is clear okay you can use the trick that i have told in my earlier question that if a body is moving parallel to the mirror then just check the magnification magnitude of magnification how much bigger or smaller the image is and then just don't square the term and multiply it with v naught in the earlier case when the object was moving along the principal axis you need to find the magnitude of magnification and then square the term here you don't need to square the term that's the difference okay i hope the concept is clear so i won't be giving you any kind of mcq in order to explain this concept because i've already given two problem from the earlier case if you can understand that then this will be simple as that so i hope if question are asked based on this concept then you can easily smash those question okay so this is all for this video so these are all the concepts it took me around uh, seven part to explain all the concept related to reflection for plane as well as spherical so all the concepts are done regarding reflection so from the next video i'll be jumping into refraction and it will be amazing i could say okay so let's see how simple can we make the concept of refraction so yeah that's all for this video if you enjoyed this video then please give it a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed to this channel then please consider doing so till next time enjoy your studies and build your concept and i will catch you all in my next video bye bye